apologize if it takes a couple minutes for me to ask my question. I'm very nervous because you're one of my favorite actresses of all time. Thank you. Um, my first, I have two questions. My first one is in terms of being an act, a producer and director and a female in the industry, what is something you're passionate about that you'd like to see more of? And also, with working on uh, SG-1, I'm sure everybody wants to know this, what's it like working with MacGyver? <laughs> with your second question first. Uh, I, I've said this many times, and I stand by my story. He is amazing. He's a great guy. He's, he's guileless. He has, he could have come in with a huge amount of ego, being MacGyver, and being sort of a pop culture reference, and he didn't. He was very humble and really sweet and so easy to work with, and a big kid. I mean, he was probably the goofiest member of SG-1. <laughs> Clearly, he was the goofiest member. <laughs> and he brought something to the character of Jack that evolved over the seasons, but that was pure Rick. So he's absolutely lovely. Um, so the first part of your question, what am I passionate about as a, a woman in this industry is getting more women into the industry. <laughs> I think, yeah. Mentor when I can young women who are coming forward, and I have you know I work with women in film, and uh, I have a lot of women come up to me, and and I've been able to bring them onto set and show them green screen te technology, for example, or let people shadow me while I'm directing, and and I just think it's really important that we support and push each other forward. You said that MacGyver is easy to work with. Humble, professional. But what's Richard Dean Anderson like? He's a dick. MacGyver's <laughs> great, but Richard Dean Anderson, wow. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's amazing. He is MacGyver. <laughs> Do I have any tattoos or piercings? Yeah. I have my ears pierced. I don't have any tattoos. And I got my belly button pierced a long time ago. Uh, and then I um, got pregnant and I like, kept it in for a while and then I got more pregnant and then I took it out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Hi. Hi. My name is Mark. I watch all the SD series and movies. What did you like and dislike about acting in so many SD series? Good job, Mark. Thank you. What do, you like? uh, what do I like? It's an amazing. I get to play an amazing character, and I get to work with people that I love. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there was anything I didn't like about shooting Stargate, except that we shot a lot outside in the mountains of North Vancouver in the winter time, <laughs> which has its moments of being somewhat unpleasant. But, um, as far as a job goes, it was amazing. And to work on a series for 10 years and to laugh, and not just like, ha, uh, but belly laugh every single day, what an amazing gift. Yeah. Purists would say no, the doctor has to be a man, but <laughs> and I also just wanted to know, um, I don't know if you've ever watched Warehouse 13, but that would show you, <laughs> would, you, would you 
ever like maybe incorporate the Helen Magnus character onto Warehouse 13 since what a great H. idea. H. Wells knows Tesla and you know Helen knows Tesla. What a great idea. Tesla and shippers if you close the series with no kiss. I just wanted to kiss Jonathan, so. <laughs> um, Jonathan and I actually, it wasn't in the script, and Jonathan and I had talked about towards the end of the season trying to find the little, not so subtle, because neither Helen nor Tesla are subtle. <laughs> not so subtle, nuances between them, and that's why there's that line about Vienna, remember, and that wasn't in the script, it was just... You know, he added the remember and we added the look. And I think the kiss at the end for us was kind of dual purpose. It was a bit of a red herring, so the audience would think that Helen would actually die. Um, because she can be killed. She just never has been. Um, so it was, a, it was a goodbye. It was a very emotional, like, I hate to say, I'm not gonna say the word, but stuff's getting real moment, right? And, and I also think it was um, when you, you know, it was just a culmination of this incredible chemistry between the two of them and this friendship. And definitely at one point in time, they were lovers, I think. I don't know if anyone agrees with that, but I think so. And so it was that. It was, you know, you're one of my oldest, dearest, most amazing friends, and I may die, and I may never see you. And, so it was just, yeah, it could have been a hug, but I think the kiss was way more powerful. Oh, for sure. For Jonathan sure. and I didn't mind doing it so much. <laughs> for our jobs. <laughs> As a suggestion for something that you two could do in the future, I mean, you could do a small web series of, you know, the Nicola and Helen adventures. <laughs> exactly. Go back in time. Yeah. Gift and whatnot. We, we actually pitched a mini-series that was a little bit of more of a time travely kind of thing that would figure Tesla pretty big in it. I would watch it. If would you know you anyone at Sci-Fi who might be interested. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
brings up a question, though, given that Sanctuary started as a miniseries on the web. You're, you're directing Primeval New World now, some episodes, but in terms of creating another project, would you ever go back to the web as the incubator for a, a new project? Oh, yeah. I think it's a great tool, and I think that, that Sanctuary was, like, a good five, six years ahead of its time in terms of how to how to monetize something on the web and and how to really uh, spread it across the multi-platform, which was our initial goal, but I think we were we were just a little bit ahead of our time. So I think now it's actually a much more ripe time to do something like that. And I think it's an amazing tool. Yeah. Hey, good to see you. Amanda, your body of work, absolutely brilliant. All the seasons of uh, Stargate, you know, Reese Kingdom Falling, and Sanctuary. Um, the emotional connection that you have with Emily Ellerup at the end of season one of uh, Sanctuary, beginning of season two, that separation scene, I lost someone very dear to me uh, just around that time, and I keep listening to it. It just, it keeps bringing me back. I know there was talk of bringing Emily back again. She had her surgery. What was the creative process that you were sitting around with and talking about as a way to fit her back in? We actually had uh, we had a couple of episodes. One in particular that was a little bit um, a little bit of a flashback idea, but with the potential to kind of rework the past and have her. But Emily uh, or Amelia wasn't uh, wasn't available for that episode. And then there was another one, and she she was shooting. I don't know if it was Arctic Air or or whether it was before Arctic Air, but she was shooting and wasn't able to do it. And I think at that point, Amelia had sort of moved on. So she, yeah, I would love to have brought her back. I didn't want to see her go. So, thank yeah, you. thank you. Hi, Amanda. Um, a lot of the questions I was going to ask sort of came out already in other people's questions. So I just wanted to ask a quick question and see if I could get you a small present. Um, but uh, I really do hope that I can be one of those women that you mentor sometime. I'm in the film business and uh, it's too exciting for words and I'm just like all giddy about talking to you and, and the idea that, that you've pushed things forward so much because it's still such a, um, it's a, such a men's world out there and every time I go into a meeting I have to fight that fight and it's really frustrating. But um, in the next few years, do you see yourself doing film? Do you see yourself staying on television, going back to web? What's your preferred medium right now? I don't know that I have a preferred medium. When Sanctuary finished, I've done, since, since we wrapped, I guess a year ago, I've done four films uh, that I've acted in, and then also directed three episodes of, of sci-fi. And I'm about to direct Arctic Air. Um, yeah, so maybe I get to work with Amelia again. Uh, you know, any way I can, I'll just. Um, so I don't know, I don't know what my preferred medium is. The films that I've done were small and, and kind of contained in really fun indie projects. Um, Space Milkshake with Robin. That was, I saw Trilly for that. Kristen adorable. Kruik, yeah, it's coming out. It's goofy as hell, and we had a blast doing it. Um, Random Acts of Romance is a film I'm super proud of that'll be coming out soon. Taken Back, which I think already aired in the States and is coming, yeah, which was a trip because it was a character I don't usually get to play. And then I just did a movie uh, called Kid Cannabis. Um, so, yeah, about stuff. <laughs> it's actually a cool little film. It's a little indie as well, based on a Rolling Stone article about a boy in Idaho who transported BC marijuana across the border and made massive amounts of money. <laughs> and I, much to my chagrin, played his mother. <laughs> because you agreed with him, or because you were of Josh Shane of what he was Because doing. I am not old enough to have a teenage son. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know, I, I'm sort of, it's nice. I love television, I love the medium, I love working on series, I love the sense of family, I love, uh, I really do, I mean, I've been very blessed to do Stargate and Sanctuary where it was a real sense of family and to be connected to that. So, I, I would happily go back to television. I think it's a great genre, a great medium, and I love this genre, so. I know you're talking about green screen, have you used Chromate yet? Have no. you seen this? Have you, oh, it's amazing. It's like it's like uh, little glass beads on a curtain, and it shoots. Uh, you actually have an LED ring around the camera lens that shoots red or blue. Oh wow! So you can light it any way you want. Cool. Instead of yeah, yeah. totally flat. Can I give you something? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
and what Frankel, the last right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Should we read? You don't know, Book test, you turn to page 41, and if you like it, then the book is good. Hi, how are you? Hi. Um, I can only imagine that what you do is fairly stressful. And I know other actors have said, if you want a friend in Hollywood, get a dog. I just wondered, do you have any dogs or cats? And I do. I have a big dog. He's a Bouvier. He's about 120 pounds, and his name is George. <laughs> and he's awesome. I also have a husband and a child, which, you know, helps too. <laughs> dogs and cats are easier. But dogs are great. Yeah. <laughs> And, and we actually, we, we do have to wrap a little bit early, I'm told. Um, so we only have time for, uh, for, for one more, two more of your super quick. Yeah, sorry about that. I apologize. Bad, bad cop, yeah. It's still quite early, but yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> about me um, and I did it I, I said you know what this is really what I want to do and I put myself through university and I just I did it through a lot of adversity and, and a lot of great good fortune so I'm a huge proponent of following what you want to do yeah, I don't want to say follow your dreams because that just sounds so lame but really <laughs> to do what they really love and have found great success. So, um, yeah, you got to do it. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you.